Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Steve with St. Bridges Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the 14th day of March 2023, and our readings today come from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 34 through 43. Psalms 25, verses 4 through 9, and also the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Well, folks, we're off to Lent, you know, uh, as always, I hope that you're having a great Lent. I hope that your prayer life's increasing. I hope that your scripture's increasing. I hope you bought yourself that Lenten reflection. I hope that you're building yourself up in the Lord. But most of all, like I've been taking a, to asking you, I hope that when you leave your house, I hope that when you're on the road, I hope when you're on the job site, you reflect the Christian life. Because folks, I just come back from a, uh, a conference and I'm gonna tell you right now that we're failing. You know, you see those people with the fish on their truck or the cross or sticker on their car. Folks, you guys aren't showing that you're good, that you're that you're acting as responsible Christians. You know, you, you gotta you you gotta show the world that we're different. That's where I'm gonna go with this reflection. You know, yeah, it might seem that I'm beating y'all up, and I'm just a one-trick pony here, but folks, we're losing the battle to win souls by what we're doing, not what we're saying. Not by our faith. We're not even getting the chance to talk to people. So today I'm asking you, what do you do when no one's watching? Think about it. Really think about it. What are you doing when no one's watching? So I'm going to tell you a little story. It's about a man. And this man, well, he's a construction worker and he goes off to work and he passes, he goes to his favorite gas station, gets his gas every morning, gets a snack. Coming home, he, he, oftentimes he stops again and gets his little snack for the, for the trip home. You know, he's wearing a, a t-shirt or a hoodie often. It has uh, Christian mottos, Christian sayings, uh, Christian prints on them. You know, sometimes it's cold, he wears that jacket. You know, it's his church jacket. It has the emblem of his, of his faith community on it. Yeah, he's a proud Christian. He thinks he does really well in the world. Talks to his friends about the Lord. So one day he gets his gas and he's going back to his truck counting his change. And he sees, I got three bucks more than I should. He's getting in his truck. He goes, oh, the Lord's good to me. I got three extra bucks for gas. And then he thinks about it. He goes, you know what, that's not right. So he walks back in, tells the owner, hey, he gave me three dollars too much. Then the owner looks at him and says, yeah, yeah, I know. Kind of surprises the gentleman. Because, you know, I see you every day and I see you Christian shirts and church jacket you know I've I'm, I'm wondering maybe I want to be a Christian because you seem like a really good person you, you, you seem to have a nice conversation and well you know I was just wondering I know what because I read the Bible for myself but I just was curious to see if you lived what your what your scriptures say and you know folks yeah could this story happen could the outcome is the man did the right thing lived and showed what we teach in the scriptures you see i think that often we forget People are watching. And I think that 
as long as we ignore that, we don't worry about it, we're destined to fail because we're all going to make mistakes. Me, you, everybody is going to make mistakes. And we're just human. Come on, folks. Let's not, let's not all pretend we're walking on water here. So, again, I ask you, what do you do when, when nobody's watching? Because the, the world is watching Christians right now, specifically. And they're not, they, they, they don't like what they, what they think they perceive. You know, Christian writer C.S. Lewis is quoted as saying, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one's watching. The philosopher Aldo Leopold once said, ethical behavior is doing the right thing when no one else is watching, even when doing the wrong thing is legal. I don't think any of us would argue the fact that, you know, when we get out in the, in the real world and we're going about the hustle and bustle of life, you know, we, we, sometimes we have two personas. You know, according to psychologists, you know, during our everyday life, every, every one of us navigates two different versions of ourselves. You know, we have the per public version. You know, it's what we want everybody else to see. It, it's that conscious effort we make, you know, we want to portray ourselves in the best light. And it's usually, usually when somebody important, the boss, the pastor, an elder, uh, somebody that, that's significant in our minds. You know, we want to, we want to, we want to portray ourselves in the best light. And I think that's just human nature. But by comparison, we have a private self, you know, and that private self is only for us. It's, it's what we have hidden. It's what we, it's our thoughts and often our actions when, when we're alone, when nobody's watching. It's, it, it, for the most part, it's something we don't want to show the rest of the world. We keep it, we keep it secret. We, we keep it hidden. And as Christians, we sh should be concerned with that second persona. Let's call it personal or private morality. What we do when nobody's around. When you're home by yourself. And you're working on the computer. Are, are you straying to websites maybe you shouldn't? When you're out at the gym, are you having conversations with people you shouldn't or having the wrong kind of conversations? It happens, folks. It happens to everybody. And we need to be conscious of that. It's the small things, the small situations that seem to pass under the radar. Oh, it was a passing thought. It was a passing comment. You know, we have to be conscious of those circumstances, you know, because if nobody else sees, God sees. And this, the biggest test of all, I think, is for a Christian is what we do when nobody's watching. How do we live the Christian life? Talk is cheap. You know, you go out there and memorize a hundred verses and spout your your favorite verse any, at any given random time. Does that really make us followers of Christ? Or do our actions? You know, folks, it comes down to how we treat a child. Here's a good one for you. How do you treat your servers? Those people waiting on you, a checker, a waitress, a cook. You know, how do we relate to, to our senior people, our elderly, in, a, in a nursing homes and hospitals? Here's the one, and you know, this is, is my favorite uh, pet peeve. How do you treat that homeless person on the street? You know, remember what we read in Matthew, verse, uh, chapter 25, verse 30, 35. I was a stranger and you took me in. 
A great example is the Good Samaritan. It's a, it's a great parable on multitude of levels. You know, we see that, you know, the, the Levi and the, the, the priest, and they, they just bypass this guy. And they have their own little tiny reasons why, why they can't, can't be bothered. But we read, we read in, in Luke 10, 33, 35, but a Samaritan, as he traveled and came there where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him, and he went to him and bandaged his wounds and poured in oil and wine. And he put on the man his own donkey and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and he gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense, expenses you have. When nobody else was watching. Are we, do, you, we, do we, do you, do, do, do all of us just make it up? And, and justify our own actions? Because nobody's watching. Oh, this is just once. Oh, nobody will see. Oh, the Lord will forgive me. You know, that's a slippery slope. It's something we don't want get to get, get, in, get involved with. It's not somewhere we want to go. You know, how do you treat people? Think about the last event. School event, social event fraternal event, church event. How did you treat people? How did you treat leadership? How did you treat people? Most of all, how did you treat the staff? Did you stay in your own little clique and, and just not talk to people who you thought didn't deserve it? Did you ignore the staff? Did you, did you take some time to say thank you? What do you do when nobody's watching? Proverbs 14.31 says, Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt, for their, shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Again, folks, when we're out in the real world, we, we, we're paying the cashier, we're talking to the waitress, whatever. Insert, let's, let's try this, reading this a little different. Whoever is not kind to the working shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to those people honor God. It's not a stretch, folks. What do you do when nobody's watching? In the words of John Wooden, Be more concerned with your character than your reputation. Because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think of you. And if we're going to think of our reputation, you know, let's think about our reputation with God, our Creator. Folks, I'm concerned, everybody should be concerned that every year we have one less percent of people that believe in God. The harvest is, is growing more and more plentiful, folks. There's always that opportunity. Spread the gospel wherever you go. If necessary, use words. That may or may not be what St. Francis said, but it's no less th true. It's truer today than it was then. Folks, I hope you have a blessed and I hope you have a wonderful Lent. We're getting ready for that beautiful, that beautiful day when we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Go out, be good people, be great Christians. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand till we meet again.